Action and Adventure TV Shows Channel from Comedy MX Spotlights Tarzan, Rin Tin Tin, Zorro, Complete Saturday Matinee Serials, Captain Zero, Annie Oakley, The Big Picture, Korea and Vietnam Wars, and more, more, more. The thrills and chills never stop at Comedy MX. So return with us now to those golden days of yesteryear. Inhabited only by shadows of a civilization long dead. A planet where life of every kind has departed. We must use Tarsus, Commander Richards. There is no other planet on which we can conduct our negative gravity experiment. There must be another place. Tarsus is out. Tarsus is deserted. We can set up our experimental equipment using robot mechanisms and gauge the impulse reactions by electronic equipment set up on the sky flash. I'm fully aware of the importance of your work, Dr. Sarkov, but you'll have to find another planet that will do as well as Tarsus. There is none to our knowledge. I told you that before. Tarsus is ideal. Well, then you'll have to find some place that's not so ideal. Tarsus will not be used. But why? Will you please tell me why? You don't know what just happened to the exploratory mission we sent to Tarsus? No. I've been in my mountain lab completely out of touch with things. What happened? Well, we'll soon know the details. All I've had up to now are fragmentary reports, but even from them I'd be a murderer if I let you go. Flash Gordon is here, sir, with Dr. Jervis of the Tarsus expedition. Good, send them in at once. Now we'll get the full story. I'm so sorry, Dr. Jebos. Can I get you something? I don't think he's strong enough to answer any questions right now, Commander. Ever since he landed his spaceship, he's been hysterical. We did what we could to calm him down, but... Now, this is Dr. Jebos, one of the scientists we sent on the exploratory mission to Tarsus. Jebos? Of course. You know him? By reputation only. I'm familiar with his treatise on astrohydraulics. Remember, Dale? Oh, that's right, Doctor. He's in a state of complete nervous shock. Well, Dr. Jevitt, what happened up there? I'm Dr. Zarkov. What happened on Tarsus? Where are the others who went with you? Dead. Hold. Dead. How? What happened? Speak up, man. What happened? I'm afraid he won't be able to answer any more questions, Doctor. He's completely... No, no. It's important that they know. I'll do my best. Don't send anyone there. You'll murder every man you send to Tarsus. What kind of nonsense is this? Nonsense? Can you call it nonsense? When your own companions are stricken before your very eyes? When suddenly they are dead? For no reason? For no cause? Except the curse? A curse? What curse? Curse. But better for God. Strikes in silence. It will kill anyone who sets foot on that horrible planet. It didn't kill you. My escape is a miracle. Just a miracle. Perhaps you'd better tell us exactly what happened. Yes. Yes, I will. There were four of us in that expedition. Four of us who landed on Tarsus. There was Williams. Leader of our company, 
an outstanding physicist. Leclerc, astrochemist. Bending, our engineer. And myself. Our landing on Tarset was easy enough. We made our way to a structure that we had seen from the spaceship. It was the only building not in utter ruins. Inside, we made our way along a corridor. The sides thick with dust. And all around, there was the horrible feeling of death. We reached a bend in the corridor. And like an invisible hand had grabbed us, we stopped, afraid to make the turn. Williams finally had the courage to go on. I wanted to turn and run back to the ship. I'd never known fear like that, even when I knew what I feared. Finally, one by one, we followed him. as if it had been carved out of a solid block of evil. And then we heard its voice. I am Belphagor. Know all ye who trespass upon my tomb that upon ye shall rest my curse forevermore. The voice. That horrible voice. I still hear it. Williams walked towards the idol on the throne. And then suddenly, a blinding light shot down upon him, shooting from its single eye. He fell. Leclerc ran to help him, and the light caught him. Bending and I stood horrified. They were dead. So we turned, we ran, as if evil on the wing were after us. We ran. I heard Bending running behind me. Suddenly he screamed. I looked back. The light had him. He fell towards me. I just ran on. A terrifying experience. Don't send anyone to that planet. It's cursed. Ridiculous. We must use Tarset for our negative gravity experiments. Aren't we sticking our necks out? If what happened to him happened to us, we have no choice. The threat to our galaxy from the people of Ebon has never been so serious as it is now. Our only defense will be negative gravity. Find some other place for the experiments. There is no other place. Tarset is the one astrographical location where the repelling force of negative gravity is effective in relation to Earth. Besides, who believes this business of idols and strange curses? It's, it's superstitious rot. I saw it. You'll have a chance to see it again. I'm going to Tarset. I'm with you, Doctor. Dale? I'm ready to start right now. Well, Dr. Jeffers, we can't make it without you, but if you'll come along as our guide, we can save much valuable time. No. No. I can't. The defense of the galaxy depends upon it. Everything we have, our civilization, our science, everything will be wiped out if the people of Edwin are victorious. How can you refuse? No. Of course you're right. I can't refuse. I'll go along with you to Tarset. Good. Prepare the flight plans, will you, Commander? We'll be off in 48 hours. Come on, Dale. Doctor? Invasions from heaven. Idols. Strange voices and strange lights. You think anybody will believe that stuff, Doctor? I do curses? Rot. How can you, a trained scientist, believe it? A man believes what he sees. And I have seen these things. So will you.
around that bend is the temple. Please don't enter. We'll never get out alive. You did the last time. Maybe we'll be as lucky. Let's go, Doctor. upon my tomb, that upon ye shall rest my curse forevermore. to get out of here alive. Start telling the truth. The truth? What are you talking about? You saw? I saw plenty. Enough to know that you've been lying from the word go. I haven't. Tell the truth. What's it all about? I don't know. The curse of Belphegor. What kind of a moron do you take me to be, Jevis? Curses. Idols. The next thing you'll be screaming about will be witches riding around on brooms. You're lying. No. You said Bending was killed while running down the corridor with you. But when we found him, his head was towards the idol. He wasn't killed while running away. He was killed before he ever got there. Why did you lie about that? I didn't. All three were killed, but you were allowed to escape. Why? I, I don't know. You do know. Tell me the truth. I won't tell you anything. Let me out. Let me out. It's I, Professor Gibbon. Let me out. Let me out. The wolves. They're coming at the crusher. Now, will you tell the truth? They're going to kill you along with the rest of us. No, they can't. They promised to save me. Who? Who promised? The men of Evan. They trapped us in the temple. They told us to help them or die. William McClare Bending chose death. Why is Tarset so important to them? To the invasion. It's coming in this direction. They want to use Tarset as a staging area for their final assault upon Earth. How could you betray your galaxy like that? And worse, watch your... Watch your friends die when you agreed to help their killers. I don't know. I was crazy. They offered me money, power, exchange to be raining prices and great scientists. I was. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to die. You think you have a right to live? Save me. I'm sorry, save me. Talk to the walls, Jealous. Maybe they'll hear you. Call on Belphegor. Maybe he'll listen. <laughs> The Flat Tarset, a dead, desolate world long deserted by its people. Here in the crumbling temple of Belphegor, the mystic god of death, while Flash fights for his life, Dale and Dr. Zarkov are desperately trying to avoid the touch of the lethal ray emanating from the single eye of Belphegor. 
In a cell nearby, Flash and the traitor Jeebus, an Earth scientist who sold out to the people of Ebon, are trapped between two slowly moving walls that threaten to crush them at any moment. The walls are so dry and crumbling, the pressure from the moving wall pulverized them. The whole temple is ready to fall. What are you going to do with me now? Right now I'm interested in Dale and Dr. Zarkoff, not you. Who else is on this planet besides us? Mister. Who's he? A man from heaven. One of their intelligence agents. The one who bribed me. How many with him? I don't know. Some. Maybe three, four. What's behind it all? I told you. They want to use this planet to spearhead an invasion on our galaxy. When? When will it begin? Soon. That's all I know. Soon. I was crazy. I didn't know why I did it. Chief of Intelligence to His Exalted Mightiness, Draco, ruler of Ebon. Ebon? Yes, Ebon. You are an unexpected prize, Dr. Zarko. I hardly expected so impressive a bag to fall into my net. I'm easily bored with second-rate theatrics. So why not get to the point? Point one. Don't look for help from Flash Gordon. He and that idiot Jevos are dead. By my hand. <laughs> I have spared your life, Dr. Zarkov, up to this point, because you can be of use to my sovereign. My services are expensive. You can name any price. The information we want is worth it. And the information? Complete plans and details of the negative gravity force you have developed. And you must give us the method to combat it. We must know how to smash through it so we can land our forces on Earth. And if I refuse? You will watch Miss Arden slowly and painfully put to death. Well, Dr. Zarkov, what is your answer? His answer is no. But, Dale... My life against the millions they could take on Earth? We have no choice, Doctor. We'll see how brave you are, Zarkov, while you watch her slow destruction. The death eye of Belfagor will bring you earthlings to your knees. Take them to the pillar. I'm not scared. Your scientific mind, Dr. Zarkov, won't accept the preposterous idea of an idol possessing a lethal curse. The curse of Belfagor is man-made. It's a lethal weapon, not a curse. You have seen the result? Obviously, you have a paralysis ray machine set into the idol's head. Quite right. 
a paralysis ray machine whose controlled ray cuts through organic matter, destroying the millions of nerves, eating its way deep into the very nerve centers until total paralysis is achieved. You're a fiend. Not by choice. This is war. Dale, I can't let them do it. You must. I can't, I can't. You must. And you will. Your last chance, Darkoff. Think. Think. Can you stand there and watch her shrivel slowly? The instant I lower this lever, deterioration begins. He's not going to tell you anything, so turn on your ray. Get it over with. Stop talking, turn it on. Very well. But only a few degrees at first, so you can feel its power. Dale! Dale! Swear to me, Dr. Zarkoff, you won't tell them. No. Swear it! All right. You barely felt anything. Now let us see how brave you are, Miss Harden. You! Gordon! God, help me! Flash! The ray machine! Turn it off! We'll die, just as they did. You exaggerate, Mesden. What? Untie them. Flash, how did you figure... It's okay, Dale. I heard him say the ray penetrates organic matter, so I slipped my watch glass over the lens of the machine. Stopped the ray dead. That was quick thinking. Yeah, we've got to get out of here. Where's Professor Jevons? I don't know. He sold out to Evan and led us into this trap. It's hard to believe that. That's true. He admitted it to me. We've got to get back to the sky flash and notify Commander Richards immediately. The invasion will about, is about to begin. Stand where you are. Don't make a move. Hail Draco! Who are these Earthmen? They are those who would stand against your exalted mightiness. Flash Gordon, Dale Arden, and the bearded one is Dr. Zarkov. Ah, so, I know of them. Whosoever shall stand between Draco and his destiny shall be ground into dust. Dark. Dale. Flash Gordon calling Commander Richards. Richards here. 
Flash, I've been on tender hooks waiting for your report. I'll give you all the details as soon as we land, Commander. In the meantime, you can call off all emergency defensive measures as far as an invasion from Evan is concerned. There will be no invasion. Draco, Tyrant of Evan is dead. Flash, are you sure? This is tremendous news. When you release the news, Commander, one thing you must do. Then, Flash, what are you? Be sure that all credit is given to Professor Jevis, a great patriot who sacrificed his life in the service of his galaxy. Skyflash 2, signing off. The truth will be our secret. Ready for takeoff. Try to course for home, will you, Dale? Home it is. King Akeem, where brotherly love is considered a weakness, where cruelty, hate, and lawlessness are virtues, and where murder is commonplace. This is a street in Tranto, the capital of Canada. It is broad daylight, and yet there is a feeling of fear, the fear of a dark, moonless night. This is a man of Karen, a man who has lived outside of the laws of Karen because, and listen well, because he is an honest man. His mission this morning is to escape. Escape to another planet where he can live in dignity and without fear. But escape from Karen is not easy. These lurk in every corner, waiting for their prey. And for those who would help the helpless, there is no mercy. These offenders must answer to the highest law, the highest authority of Karen, the king himself. You are under arrest. Come on. And so a man whose crime was honesty, whose ambition was to live in peace and dignity and without fear, has his life, dream, and all his possessions torn from him in a matter of seconds. This is Karen, the stronghold of Akim, the terrible. As you can see here, Owl, there have been improvements. It looks beautiful. Beautiful. It's good to have you back, Owl. But how goes our campaign? In some ways, very well, Your Majesty. But as long as... Uh, the Galaxy Bureau of Investigation for leaders, the Galaxy, we cannot make the happy you desire. But their leaders have a prize. Every man has a prize. So I thought, Your Majesty. But as dedicated as you and I are to spreading the doctrine of evil, so are they of the GBI devoted to spreading the doctrine of good. Then they must be destroyed. That is easily said, sire. But to destroy such men who have strength, brains, and the support of every government in the galaxy is not so easy. Destroy their leaders. Do that, and the rest will fall apart. That is true. But to destroy Commissioner Herrick, Dr. Sarkov, or even Dale Arden, Sarkov's assistant, is practically impossible. 
Why? I can sing of the Hamda way. And there's always Flesh Gorn to contend with. Flesh Gorn. All your reports are full of him. The Kuana Remo smashed by him. The attempt to take over the galaxy radio power plant of Trios. Discovered and defeated by him. Yes. If we can find a way to destroy Flesh Gordon, Your Majesty, the galaxy will be... And what have we here, sir? His name is Jarvo, Your Majesty, an offender against the crown. The charge? Breaking the first law of terror. The old, the weak, and the sick shall perish by the hand of the strong. And the specific crime? Defending an old man who was in the process of being robbed. You may go. Did you not know you were committing a crime against Karen? Against me, the king? Certainly, Your Majesty. What child doesn't know your filthy law that unless you can rob, cheat, and betray, you'll one day face death by your hand? That's an admission of grief. The traitor's death and Karen is preferable to life here, where the only honor is deceit. Death is too easy for you. You are too eager for it. I shall change your point of view. All right, torture me. Do what you will. You will never destroy my conviction that the laws of Karen are wrong and inhuman. No. <laughs> Never is a long time. How long? now. The old, the weak, the sick shall perish by my hand. Let him go. He will be a law-abiding citizen of Karen from now on. What is it? I have a message from the Spaceport Highness. Well? A representative from the Galaxy Bureau of Investigation is on his way here. The ship has just taken off from Earth and will land on Charon within the hour. A GBI man from Earth. Well, well, Arvo. That's a pleasant surprise. We shall give him a warm welcome when he arrives. Yes? Commissioner Eric, Tashkon and Dil Abner here. Good, send them right in. Patrol ships out, I see. Yeah. And all on charted course and in good shape, thank heaven. Position H was supposed to be the sky flash on a special mission. Where to? Karen, one of the black planets of our galaxy. That's the stronghold of the king they call Akim the Terrible. That's the play, and that's the man. Somehow or another, we must keep him from spreading his evil influence throughout the galaxy. Well, if I remember correctly, he has no army. Only a strong arm squad that rules Karen by fear. He has no army. But his kingdom is a kingdom of evil. Wherever there is evil throughout the galaxy, there he finds allies, ready to steal, murder, and destroy for him. Obviously, Akeem the Terrible is GBI's top assignment right now. When do we start? You don't. As I told you when you came in, you were supposed to be on your way to Karen now. But the crime situation is getting so out of hand, I... Well, I have to send somebody else? Go ahead. Who is it? Kurt Weber. 
You couldn't have picked a better agent. Kurt and I went through GBI training school together, you know. His record is excellent. I'm confident that he can handle the assignment. But there was another reason for urgency. Horrible. Hackens Ambassador at large has returned to Karen. Why does that worry you, Commissioner? Every time he's returned before, a crime wave throughout the galaxy. Follows. Start up, sir. Calling GBI headquarters. That's his hourly report in. Coming, Commissioner. Give us video, Harry. too, Frank. Coming, Commissioner. Yes, Harry. sir. Hi, Commissioner. <laughs> Where are you, Kurt? Just getting ready to land on Karen. Hi, Flash. How beautiful. Seems that I beat you both out of a trip for once, eh? Take care of yourself, Kurt. And watch old Akeem. He's a tough customer. Don't worry, Flash. I'll keep my eye peeled on the old pirate. See if I can find out what he's up to, huh? Uh-oh. Coming into the spaceport. I'd better decelerate before I wind up in little pieces. Report back in 15 minutes, as arranged. Business here on Carl? Yes. With whom? The king. Do you have an appointment? No, no. What you really are is a spy. You've got my credentials. I'm not hiring anything. Give me your gun. Sir, sir. Now, wait, you have no right. I'm chief agent with full diplomatic immunity. Yes? The GBI spy is here, Your Majesty. Your orders have been carried out. Bring him to me. What's the meaning of this? I'm an accredited representative of GBI. I'm sorry my men handed you so roughly, my dear Mr. Weber. <laughs> Do you see there are that mild thought here on Karen? But to get to the point, I have a job for you. If it is something that is within my power as representative of GBI? Not exactly. I want you to kill Flesh God. Your humor is a little heavy for me. But I'm quite serious. If so, you must be clean out of your mind. Flesh Gordon is my best friend. But he is my greatest enemy. He will stand in my way no longer. Flesh Gordon will outlive you, Akim. And wherever you try to spread evil, he and the entire GBI will stop you. You refuse to kill him. Need I answer? Of course not. But in that case... Kill Flesh God now? Yes. Yes, of course. I'll kill him. But you have not forgotten he's your best friend. Friend? I hate God. After you have taken care of him, what about Commissioner Harris? Oh, why not? Good. Good. But first, how do you plan? to do your job on God. Oh, don't worry. I'll find a way, and quickly. Here. Take this. It's silent and sure. Oh, I don't want the GBI to get suspicious. If I don't report back to them in the televiewer every 15 minutes, they all send help here to me. You can use my teleradio. Kurt, five minutes overdue. 
I'm buried. Calling GBI. Scott Webber, I'm Karen. I'm glad to hear that voice. Give us leader or two for it. Everything all right? Fine. Arkham isn't going to cause any more troubles in the galaxy. What makes you so sure? I'll give you details when I get back. Uh, oh, Flash. Yes, Kurt? I'd like to see you when I get back. Sure, when? I'm starting back to Earth in a few minutes. I'll be there in an hour. Where will I be able to find you? Well, I'll be in my office for about three hours, catching up on some work. Good. See you later. That takes care of that. This will take care of God. And now a spaceship heads toward Earth from Canada. Piloted by a man with a twisted brain. A brain fevered by a machine of treachery. A treachery for which he is not responsible and cannot control. Okay, glad to see you back. Glad to be back, Flash. How are you, boy? Fine, never better. How are you? All oh, fine, too. Oh, I see you're planning another cruise. That's right. Quite at this time. Canny's Fanatici. Oh, that's a new one on me. Uh, is it on the map? It sure is. It's part of the Crab Nebula, one of the messier objects. Here's the globular cluster. First, we hit Taurus here, Aquarius here, and Scorpion here. Ah! <laughs> Just as I thought. What is it, Doctor? Something has been done to Kurt's brain. That reaction, you see, is the brainwave of a homicidal maniac. Good heavens. It looks almost as though he had had a frontal lobotomy. And yet there are no scars on the skull. That's strange. Unless it were done electronically. All right, dear, the light. There's only one answer to this, Flash. I know, Chief. Dale and I'll take off right away. I'll make a keen pay for doing this to Kurt. All right. Mm -hmm. But before you go, I'll give you a special code so you can report to us without detection in case of trouble. Right. Well, wait a minute. If we're captured, Akim can do to us what he's done to Kurt. I've thought of that. We can try to avoid it. But how since we don't know what happened? You and Dale will have to have your hair cut off. After that, we'll put a band of selenite on your frontal lobe and put a wig on each of you. And you think it'll work, Doctor? You think those selenite bands will protect their hats from whatever happened to poor Kurt? I don't know. At best, it's a gamble. We can only try. Dig that wig, Dale. Dig that wig, Dale. Don't flip your lid, Flash. Hooray for toupee. You be quiet, Casey. Hang on, Dale. We're coming in for a landing. What are you worried about? Weber has only been gone for a day. Maybe he has... Uh, Recovered sooner than we expected. Akeem, what did you do to Kurt Weber? 
Welcome, Gordon. Your visit was not expected. Answer me, what do you do to Weber? I will do better than that. I will show you. in a murderous mood? Tell him to let me go and I'll show you. Fast. I will, God. But first, let us understand each other. I'm not your enemy. As far as I am concerned, you can kill, rob, swindle, do whatever you will. And nobody's going to stop me? But there are those who will try. Your chief, Commissioner Herrick, for example. Herrick? Yes, Herrick. I see what you mean. All right, Akeem, you can tell your muscle boys to let me go. Get Herrick on the televiewer. May I ask why? To call Herrick here. So as to have him free of GBI protection. Right. If we get rid of him here, there's no getaway problem. Excellent. Excellent, Gordon. Proceed. Calling GBI. Flash Gordon calling Hurry GBI. Hurry up, Fritz. Video. Quick, Doctor. Be ready to take down the code. Well, Flash? I think I have the answer, Chief. Yeah? We need you and Dr. Zarkoff here for scientific research. There's a band of radioactive material around Charon that works on people's minds. All right. We'll take off a count right away. All right, Doctor. What does the code say? Band works. In other words, Flash and Dave's brains haven't been affected. Exactly. And naturally, we are not going to take off for Karen. We agreed with Flash not to believe anything he said, except for the fourth and eleventh words in his third sentence. But Flash may be in danger right now. That's true. All we can do is wait and hope for the best. Excellent, God. Excellent. You are very clever. Thank you, Your Highness. But you are very clever to have created this machine. Yes. Unfortunately, its effects 
will last for only two weeks at a time. Naturally, my scientists are working day and night to make this period permanent. Naturally, Your Highness. And now that I've done you a favor, I have one to ask. Anything? Now that I'm on your side, may I have my stun gun back? Of course. With pleasure. Thank you, Your Highness. Frankly, I felt a little undressed without it. Take them back to Earthdale. They're the only real villains on this whole planet. And they'll send a crew from Earth to destroy all the other infernal machines on this planet. And with Akeem here in the Earth prison, these people will be free again. All right, let's go. 